Hello YouTube, my name is Jumbo Commander, and I have a Commander deck tech featuring Razakath, the Foul-Blooded. This legendary demon from Hour of Devastation is 5 black 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 for an 8-8 flampling demon. You can also pay 2 life, sacrifice another creature, to search your library for a card and put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. It is a diabolic intent on a stick. This demon is amazing. This is no one-off tutoring demon. This is tutor after tutor after tutor. Do you know what? If I was a Shadowborn Apostle, I would be apostling and clericking to this demon all the time. So what can we do to really break Razaketh the Foul-Blooded? Well, I think that there's a few different strategies. Whenever you have the ability to tutor on a commander, well, that's really powerful and it lends itself to combo because you can go find all your combo pieces. Razaketh is also really well set up for just a value tutor because you want to flood the board with a lot of creatures so you have a lot of sacrifice fodder. So maybe you have creatures that take advantage of this, creatures that come back, creatures that have ETBs, creatures that have dies triggers. All sorts of good stuff. So let's find out what angles we can take to make Razakath a very powerful commander. First off, I think we need to take a look at the creatures because we're going to want to sacrifice other creatures to activate Razakath's ability. So we're going to want quite a few of them. Now, we could just run 40 Shadowborn Apostles. That's an option, but we're just not going to worry about that right now. Okay. Bloodgast is a creature that comes back with Landfall. Gravecrawler is a creature that comes back for one black mana, as long as you have another zombie. Reassembling skeletons reassemble themselves for just one and a black. And Endless Cockroaches, love it, are just endless. They just go back to your hand every time they die. So you can keep tutoring over and over and over again with your Razakath. And you can also have some other effects that take advantage of these creatures that keep coming back. Uh, think of a skull clamp, for example. Oh, imagine that. All of these have one toughness. Amazing. Now, those are our resilient creatures, but they might not be exactly what we want. I have a few cards that give us value over and over and over again, turn after turn. Let's look at Endric Sar, Master Breeder. Every creature you cast, he will spew out thralls. You will have to manage your Thrall population if you want to keep Edrixar around, but that's going to be easy with all the great sacrifice outlets we have. Another card that's going to be really strong is Bitter Blossom, giving us a fairy every single turn at the cost of a life. And we're dealing with demons here. We can definitely sacrifice some life for the benefit of card advantage. Ophelmancer will also give us a snake every turn. That means that we could tutor every upkeep if we sacrifice that snake. And Kalitas, Traitor of Get, will give us zombies as we destroy our opponent's board. There's another class of creatures that create tokens, and those are the ones that create them as they enter the battlefield. And these are some of my favorite, because you can get a lot of advantage out of the creatures themselves just by entering the battlefield, and then you can cash them in for even better creatures down the road. So that's why a card like Panharmonicon combined with a Seer of the Damned, Grave Titan, Singir Autocrat, and Dread Drone all are very exciting for me. Dread Drone got me thinking about Eldrazi Spawns and Eldrazi Scions and how they fit perfectly with the combo mindset of this deck. Let me explain. In order to combo off, usually you need card draw and mana, and then you figure out the win condition as you go along. But really, those are the two things that you need in order to keep going forward. And Dread Drone, or cards like it, do a really good job of producing both. Now, you might see these creatures and think, that's not card draw. But with your commander, it's even better than card draw. It's card tutoring over and over again. And these Eldrazi Spawn or Eldrazi Scions can be sacrificed to produce a little bit of mana. So we should take careful note whenever we have the ability to create mana with creatures. Because creatures are our sort of currency. With our commander, there are tutoring, and with these other cards, they could be mana. And that gives us the forward momentum that we need in this deck. So a card like Phyrexian Altar or Ashnod's Altar can be very strong because they're the second half of comboing off that we need. 
That makes cards like Pawn of Ulamog and Sifter of Skulls very strong because they'll produce little Eldrazi that we can sacrifice to our demon for tutoring or just kind of like burn them up and use the mana to cast more spells. Let's even throw in Carrier Thrall. It's a nice little two for one. Now this isn't gonna be as explosive as the creatures that put multiple bodies on the battlefield, but something that you can get two sacrifices or sacrifice and a mana out of sounds like a pretty good deal. All of these sacrifice outlets and death we're talking about got me thinking about these death triggers. And there are some insane creatures that have death triggers. I gotta say that one of the most intense is gonna be Mind Slicer. Mind Slicer is a four mana horror because it brings about horror. Uh, and it doesn't matter what its power and toughness is because it says when Mind Slicer is put into a graveyard from play, each player discards his or her hand. Now you might ask, wait a second, I like my hand. Well, trust me, your hand will be just fine because you will sacrifice Mind Slicer to Razaketh. Everyone discards everything. Everyone is at zero except for you have a tutor left. So you will have one card in your hand and it's like the best card for that particular situation. Mind Slicer will make you enemies, but it will also win you games. Let's keep going with some more dies creatures. Kakusho the Evening Star swings games because it drains each one of your opponents. Often, you just gain 15 off of it and slam your opponents for a ton of damage. Corpse Augur can give you a lot of card draw. Scuttling Doom Engine just scuttles in for six damage. Matter Shaper gets some value when it dies and Treasure Keeper kind of cascades into something with a CMC three or less. And you know what? The Scuttling Doom Engine and Treasure Keeper got me thinking that there are actually quite a few artifacts that could go really well in this deck. And so I want to move away from some of the good stuff, maybe some of the combo enablers, and talk about something more specific. And that's how we could take an artifact angle with Razaketh. Now, black is not known for its particularly powerful synergies with artifacts. That would be blue or red, white searches them up, and then like, then comes black, and then like green is just like at the very bottom. But some of the most recent artifact synergies work so well with Razaketh and have come out of Kaladesh block. Weaponcraft Enthusiast is three mana for three bodies. Two of them are artifacts. That's a rate that's really hard to get. Uh, Marionette Master is crazy because it has Fabricate 3, that's 4 bodies, and the ability on Marionette Master ends games. In fact, Marionette Master could be part of a combo if we can cycle our artifacts to the graveyard and back again. Hangerback Walker could just be a simple card, 2 mana for a 1-1 one, one artifact that you can sacrifice, and then get another sacrifice out of it. In fact, that reminds me of Mer Sire. And that reminds me of the Eldrazi that we talked about a little while ago, the Carrier Thrall. Sly Requisitioner also has a very powerful mechanic. It's four and a black for a 2-2, two -two, but it has Improvise. We'll come back to Improvise. Whenever a non-token artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 1-1 one -one colorless servo artifact creature token. That's basically the mechanic that Pawn of Ulamog and Sifter of Skulls had, but for artifacts. Now I have to admit, the Eldrazi are better than Servos, because you can sacrifice them for mana, but these Servos are artifacts and we know that there are artifact synergies that can be far more powerful than little Eldrazi Scion synergies. Let's pop back to that Improvise. Improvise could also be a very powerful mechanic in this deck, because our commander costs so much. A card like Inspiring Statuary can help us cast our big black spells as we pump out more creatures that will then be sacrifice fodder to our great demon lord. So in all these creatures, we see effects that are mimicked in other creatures but with an artifact angle. And I think artifacts will be particularly strong with this commander as well, because Razaketh costs so much mana, eight mana to get on the battlefield. And it would be great if we could have mana dorks pump him into play faster. We want to get him into play and then we want to sacrifice the mana dorks to his ability. So I believe the Murs become particularly valuable. Plague Murr, Leaden Murr, and Palladium Murr. 
all of them will let you ramp into Razaketh, but then you can trade them in for better cards later in the game. Artifacts also do a great job of recursion. Scrap Trawler, Junk Driver, Mer Retriever, Scarecrone, and Trading Post will all refill our battlefield with more creatures to sacrifice to Razakath and our other sacrifice effects. This selection of artifacts can also just be a game ender. A card like Nim Deathmantle is particularly powerful in this deck. If we combine Nim Deathmantle with Su Chi, we essentially have infinite enter the battlefield triggers. Because our sacrifice outlet is our general, we'll always have access to it. And because it's a tutor effect, we can go and look for the thing that will kill out of this loop. So a card like Marionette Master will actually kill with the Su Chi Nim Death Mantle chain. And Marionette Master also goes infinite with Nim Death Mantle if you have an Ashnod's Altar, a Phyrexian Altar, or a Car Clan Ironworks. When we have a free sacrifice outlet on our general, it's really great. It facilitates with comboing off. But when that sacrifice outlet is also a tutor, it becomes insane. Nim Death Mantle goes really well when you have a creature that brings friends along. And in fact, it can go infinite with not just the Marionette Master in this way, but like Mer Battle Sphere, Worm Coil Engine, Weaponcraft Enthusiast, Grave Titan, Dread Drone, Singer Autocrat. It's the exact type of cards we want in this deck that also go infinite with Nim Death Mantle. Now, Nim Death Mantle is just an easy combo that you can throw in your deck. It's just value. It can finish a game unless your opponents are on their toes. But we can go deeper in terms of combo because Razaketh is half of the equation. Let's take a tour of possible combos. First up, we have Paradox Engine. Remember, we want to ramp our general onto the battlefield, like really quickly. And so we're going to want a lot of mana rocks, mana dorks, and then if we just have a Paradox Engine, suddenly we're sacrificing a mana dork and getting another spell and untapping everything. Think about this, we have Razaketh on the battlefield and a Paradox Engine, and we have one dumb creature. Um, let's go sacrifice the creature, get a mana crypt, cast it for nothing, untap everything. Let's <laughs> sacrifice something else, get another creature that has two bodies on it. Just Paradox Engine will generate us mana over and over again, and Drazakath will be able to tutor the card advantage we need. It just makes going off super easy. Paradox Engine rewards the permanent base mana ramp, but this is mono black. We're making deals <laughs> with demons here, so let's go all in on our mana production. Lotus Petal, get out of here. <laughs> Culling of the Weak. We're going to kill a creature for four mana. Reign of Filth. We don't need lands anymore. We're going off this turn. Lion's Eye Diamond. Psh, we don't need a hand if we're tutoring everything straight from our library. And all of these are the sort of short-sighted need mana now. I'm going off cards that really, really are powerful. Also, we don't need our hand if we mind sliced it away. So that's pretty strong too. With fast mana and easy tutoring, we can get to some pretty powerful two-card combos. Basalt Monolith or Grim Monolith and Rings of Bright Hearth gets its infinite mana. All we need is one more tutor to get us Exsanguinate and then drain our opponents out. That's kind of a boring combo. Same thing with another two-card combo, Machaeus the Unhallowed and Triskillian. One thing about these combos is that we're not committing very much to putting them in our decks. They're only two-card combos, but also they really match with Razaketh. Basalt Monolith and Grim Monolith are the ramp that we really want that can also combo with Paradox Engine. Rings of Bright Hearth copies activated abilities uh, like the activated ability of Razaketh. That's pretty good. And then Machaeus the Unhallowed gives everything undying. And that means we can sacrifice it twice to tutor twice, or we can even take advantage of double the death triggers or the enter the battlefield triggers that we were talking about. So these aren't huge investments into this deck, but they could end the game really quickly. And trust me, there are plenty of combos. If you have a favorite, you can throw it in Razakath, and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to get it off. There's one other combo piece I want to mention, and that is protection. A lot of combo decks are in blue, so they use counter spells as protection against their combo being disrupted. But you don't have that luxury. But one thing you do have in many cases is an instant speed tutor effect, and that can be pretty powerful. 
if you can throw a card like Renegade Rallyer in your deck, you can give Razakath Indestructible and then create a Servo only to sacrifice it again and tutor for the next thing. It kind of like replaces itself in terms of tutoring. You can also tutor up a card like Imp's Mischief to redirect something that's pointed at your Razakath. Now, if you're familiar with my videos and deck techs, usually I have a tapped out list that goes along with it. But in this situation, I'm going to have more than one tapped out list. Usually the list that I have just kind of borrows from a bunch of different ideas and lets you kind of see different angles in a single deck list. And then you can pair away the cards that are too expensive and put in some of your own or get rid of a whole strategy that you don't like in order to adopt a new one. But because the decks I described are so vastly different, I made two different lists. One of them is a artifact combo deck. And the other one is a good stuff deck that's leaning toward the budget side. It's going to come in at under $100. Now this might mean that some no-brainer cards get left out of both of the tapped out lists. But that's one of the great things about Razaketh is that you can make it whatever you want because it's so versatile, the ability to just tutor. As long as you have creatures in the deck, you're doing it right. Now, if some of you were disappointed that this was not a Shadowborn Apostles deck deck, do not despair, for I have plans to present my Shadowborn Apostle build along with several alternatives, and I think one of them might just be a Razaketh build. So what do I think about Razaketh? I think he's great. The simple fact that I had to just break this down into like three separate tapped out lists in another video, all dedicated to one commander, that makes me very excited because there's not one right way to build this guy. And if you pull him in your pre-release or in a draft, you can throw all of your black cards together and have a pretty powerful deck. I'm really excited about Razaketh as a commander, but I also think he's going to be pretty powerful in the 99. Any Shadowborn Apostles deck will have him as an auto-include. He'll be great. He's also a really solid reanimation target. Letting you tutor is just so powerful. Let me know in the comments if Razakath is getting into any of your current lists. I want to thank you all for watching. My name is Jumbo Commander, and I make commander content on YouTube. You just watched a video by me. If you want to watch more, consider subscribing. And I will see you soon with another awesome deck tip. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I almost made it to the end. Ugh.